looking back on my lock journey, I wish I had something to just let me know all the things that I might have needed before I started. I mean, who doesn't like the answers to a test? Everything they say, I understand. Like I speak the language. Hey y'all, today I'm gonna be showing you guys what items I wish I would have known I needed to get before I started my locks. I will be leaving the links to all these products down below. Also, I'm gonna have the chapters listed down below if you guys wanna just see the topic and see what I'm talking about with that specific topic. If you get any use of this video, just please do me a favor and hit the like button. It's free and it helps me so much. All right, let's start with the first item. The first item is my 360D mirror. Y'all, <laughs> let me just open it up first. This is what the mirror looks like. So you have this little end over here for the mirror, the middle, and then you have another part. Now these are all adjustable. All right, so I wanted to give y'all a better look. So this is the power button. And here, if I hold it, you'll see it gets very bright. Look how bright that gets, y'all. And if it's too bright for you, all you have to do is go back and hold the power button again, and it will dim the light. So you can really just put this wherever you are comfortable, depending on how much light you need. And this is how like you close it. So I just fold, you just fold this part in and then you fold this other part in here. Turning it around, there are some brackets at the top. And this is what you use to mount onto a door. To mount it, you literally would just open it up, open these brackets, and put this on a door at the top. And if you needed to adjust the height according to like the height of the door, so you can see yourself, you just pull it up and down like this. Up and down, boom. And when you're done with it, close it all up, close the brackets so you don't break them. And boom, and I just slide this in somewhere. Now this is very, very compact. I cannot do my lock journey without this mirror personally, because I want to be able to see the back of my head. I want to be able to make sure I'm not interlocking any locks together on accident. And it brightens up the view and it's adjustable to where I can see exactly what I need to see on my scalp to make sure I'm doing what I need to do. This right here stops me from having to ask my husband to help me or uh, have to find a loctician because I can't see the back of my head. That to me is a big deal. When I installed my micro locks, I literally, when I got to a certain part in my head, because I didn't have this, had to stop and ask my husband to help me part my hair. One of the parts in, um, like some of the parts in my head, they were done by my husband because I couldn't see. So he did the best he could do. <laughs> Thank you, but yes, that is what happened. Had I had this mirror, I could have parted exactly how I wanted it parted. And if I had to pick the one thing that I, if I could go back and do it different, this would be it. All right, y'all, so the next item on our list is a lint remover. This is an electric lint remover by Magic Tech. And this is what it does when you hit on. As you can see, lint flying everywhere. Now this is a jacket that I have here and it is full with lint and this is a black jacket. When you have lint on your clothes, this is the type of stuff here that will rub into your locks and get stuck. It's stuck on the jacket, as you can see. What you wanna do is get your lint remover and you move in a circular motion to get this lint off. y'all so i have used the lint remover to remove the lint from this side of the jacket i didn't do the sleeve yet but as you can see that's the sleeve and this is the part of the jacket that i removed the lint from you can clearly see the lint is gone lots of lint no lint and look at the other side of the jacket full of lint still now, removing the lint is gonna keep it out of your hair. You can also use this for like your bonnets, but pay attention to like the hoodies and stuff, y'all. There is lint trapped in these areas where you put this directly on your hair and even in your bonnets. For those of y'all who wear bonnets, make sure you check the inside of your bonnets to make sure you don't have lint in your bonnets and then putting lint in your hair. 
Using this will help a lot either way because it's going to help minimize lint that is getting into your hair and rubbing onto your locks. Next item on my list is simple but very critical to this process. A rat tail or rat tooth comb. Now call it what you want, but this is what it is. The reason why this is important is because when I was first starting my locks, it helps with the parting. It helps get it really sharp and crisp. And you need something that is not so round like this. You want something that's going to give you that precision and that's what this comb does and which is why I like to use it. I also still use this comb whenever I do my reties just to help part or just put the hair where it needs to be. This is the comb that I use every time. Next on the list for your microlock journey, if you are going to be interlocking your microlocks, you need an interlocking tool. I have a few different options to show y'all because I went through a few <laughs> until I found the one that I prefer. So this is one of my interlocking sets here. I got this from Amazon. These ones here are straight, these interlocking tools, and they do come in different sizes as far as the holes. And this is very helpful because I do have some locks that are bigger than others, and I can switch it up depending on what type of lock that I am dealing with. And also, you have some that are curved. Now these ones here also do have a slight curve, but it's curving towards the front. So it's like a slight curve going towards the front. And then you can obviously see like this hole, the holes are bigger. Now I like to have this set specifically because all of my locks are not the same size and I can just go to this one in the event that I need one for a specific size lock that maybe I wouldn't have if I didn't have this set. This one right here is probably my favorite one and the one that I use the most during my reties. This is what the tool looks like. It has a nice opening and very narrow towards the top and it has a nice curve to it and that is what I like. This one right here is from the last set that I just showed and this one is from the one that I said that I like to use the most. And as you can see, the size uh, is bigger on this one and that's why I like to use this one because it's not going to be... Um, this one right here is just not as big and that's kind of like what I prefer to use when I'm interlocking. I don't want something too big unless I need it, you know? Also my go-to, this is a just smaller one than the last one. I actually just prefer a smaller interlocking tool to interlock my locks. And let me compare that one to this one. This one is smaller than the one I just showed you guys. These two are like my go-tos between all of them. This one and this one because I like a smaller tool when I'm interlocking. So this I think gives me the perfect precision and it's not too big. So actually I think I'm tied between these two but if I had to grab one, if I had to pick one, I'm probably, I probably would pick this one because I like a smaller tool. Personal preference, again, I like to have multiple tools because I have lost and dropped many interlocking tools while I have been interlocking. While you're doing it yourself, you might just be bloop, bloop, and then drop somewhere and now I don't know where it went. My dog probably is chewing on it, having a great time or something. You know, stuff happens. It gets misplaced, they're very small, so I like to have backups. This is the Lock Sanity interlocking tool. So this is what this one looks like. Very small and curved. And this one has like a diamond shape towards the tip. Also a very good option and it has a bit more curve than the other ones that I showed you guys. Also a great option for interlocking your locks. I know a lot of people use this tool personally that I've seen on YouTube channels and stuff. I do also keep this in my toolkit just in case. I think it's always gonna come down to personal preference for which lock tool you prefer. I just prefer the two in the middle, but that one is also a very good one. Now, when I first started my lock journey, I was like, I want some colorful hair clips, and this is what I found. So I use these a lot. I really like that they're color coded because I kind of, when I do my reties, I have a color for what something stands for. So this color might stand for hair that I've already retwisted. This color might stand for hair that I didn't retwist yet. And I kind of 
put them in categories while I'm doing my hair based off of the color. If you're one of those people like me that kind of likes to categorize stuff as you're doing it, the color coding system may be a great thing for you and these clips will be listed down below. Another type of clip that I use very frequently during my reties is these metal clips. They're like metal duck clips. I also like the metal clips because they really help with the sectioning as well, with the precision. But to be honest, I think that I get more precision when I'm trying to separate the hair with the metal clips than I do with the color coded clips. Not sure why, but I just do. It could be because the ends or something, but the metal clips to me uh, give me a little bit more precision. To me, these clips right here are the most crucial clip in my process. These are like the individual small clips. The reason why I feel like these clips specifically are very crucial are because they help separate individual locks from another lock to keep them separated. Now, if you try to do that with your bigger clip, you might not get the precision. I tried it and it's just not as precise as this one. This one right here will really isolate the locks from each other. I can't go without that one. Now you do get a lot in this pack. And I also wanted to say, if you are going to be retwisting your hair instead of interlocking it, I think you may need to get more than somebody who would be just interlocking their hair because these clips will be holding down your hair as you're letting it dry from the retie and stuff. That is something to keep in mind. The next thing I think you should have on your whole lock journey, not just in the beginning, is a good spray bottle. Now, this is a mister and I love this spray bottle. And this also is a mister. So I have two here just so you guys can have an option. These are really, really, really good for giving your hair a good mist. And it evenly does it too. I really like that. It's just like a shh. I'm not gonna do it right now because I already missed it right here today. But yes, get you a good spray bottle to mist your locks. This right here made my hair feel so hydrated. If you look in the comments, you'll probably see a lot of people talk about the fact that they use it on their locks. I highly recommend. This is the Heritage Store Rose Water and Glycerin Spray Hydrating Facial Mist. I still spray this on my face and I still spray it in my hair when I don't have my aloe vera spray mix. Not to mention it has an amazing smell. Next on the list is something also very crucial. You need to have shower caps. You need to be protecting your locks when you first start your locks. Put on a shower cap. Do not just be in the shower without a shower cap. Why? Because your hair is going to unravel from the moisture just hitting your hair. If your hair is not locked, it is probably going to happen really quickly around the perimeter. And how you can protect that from happening is simply wearing a shower cap, y'all. I love these shower caps here. Let me show you why. I'm going to use this as an example. This shower cap is double lined. So you have a waterproof inside, waterproof outside, all right? But you also have these little strings here. And they're adjustable so you can tighten or loosen depending on your head type. And they just fit perfectly on your head. I've been using the same shower cap from this brand on Amazon for about two years now. And every time that I need a new one, which probably would be like a year later, I just go buy from the same brand. But I really like these shower caps. If anything was ever in the inside and you need to wipe it down, you can wipe it down. It's just really a good quality shower cap. I'm a person that like, if I find something that works good for me, I don't wanna just be buying a whole bunch of other extra stuff. I stick with what I know works. And when I find something really good, I just keep buying it. So that is the shower caps that I would recommend from Amazon that I really like. Also on your lock journey, you are gonna need a good clarifying shampoo. You can go to any store and get like Suave or something like that if you would like. The one that I currently use is the Kenra clarifying shampoo with the deep cleans. Now, you can definitely use whatever clarifying shampoo you like. I know a lot of people use Suave. Just make sure it is a clarifying shampoo that really gets your hair clean. You are definitely gonna need that for your lock journey. The next thing that you need to have during your lock journey in the beginning and throughout your lock journey is bonnets. Hear me out. <laughs> If you're not wearing bonnets at night, you are risking lint getting in your hair. For example, I have a ceiling fan. So when my ceiling fan is on, what does the ceiling fan do? It's blowing things throughout the air. If you have pets, if you do laundry, if you have anything, any debris just in the air, 
the fan is going to be blowing it around and how you can protect your hair is just simply wearing a bonnet. I have been buying, again, these specific bonnets from Amazon for about two to three years and I like these bonnets. Now the last time I bought them, I noticed they upgraded the packaging, which I, I wanted to show y'all. Now these bonnets come in this nice packaging that's really like cute on the outside. And I really appreciate that and I know there's stuff like this, but yes, this is what the bonnets look like and it kind of gives you a sneak peek of what it would look like on your head. And it really does look like that. I haven't opened these yet because I wanted to show you guys these in the packages, but yep, that's a yellowish one. And here's a pink one. And here are two that I already opened. You get a good variety of bonnets in these packages. And the inside is also satin lined, which I like. You don't want to have a bonnet that has cotton in the inside because the whole point is to keep your hair soft and cotton is going to be removing moisture from your hair. So make sure if you do get a bonnet, if it's not this one, that you are getting a bonnet that has satin lining in the inside. The outside of this bonnet though is actually like a cotton type feel, which I like. I feel like they made the purple one just for me because this is, you know, clearly the one that I wear the most. But I really like the designs and the colors for those bonnets. The next thing I think you definitely need is some satin scrunchies. Now, I got a big old variety pack on Amazon. I don't even remember how much scrunchies came in this one thing. But it was a bunch of scrunchies, a whole bunch of different colors. And it was very cheap. So I will link that down below. The satin to me is a must have because I prefer to use this over this. I just feel like putting this on my locks is a lot more smoother and I'm getting a lot less friction and that's what I want. I also like the different colors so it's just another plus but this type of material over natural hair is better than using this. I'm not gonna lie, I, do I use the other ones sometimes? Yes, I do. But I would prefer to use these and these are very cheap, very affordable, and they're cute. So definitely glad to have these in my micro lock toolkit. Another thing that I think you need at the beginning of your lock journey is a nice pouch to put all of these clips in and your interlocking tools. So this is like my lock kit and I really just put clips, interlocking tools, anything kind of small and compact that I use. And then whenever I'm ready to do my retie, I just grab my bag and I just get to it. And it's really simple and I really like it and it's really cute. I'll try to link this exact one down below, but if not, I will link something very similar. Thank you guys for watching. If you got anything out of this video, please make sure to like the video down below. Comment, let me know, do you have anything in your lock toolkit that you have that you definitely wish you had at the beginning of your lock journey. And please make sure you subscribe to the channel. I will have a lock playlist listed after this video. Thank you guys for watching and until next time, bye bye.